this next part really simple. Sing it with us. Let's say, thank you, Lord. I just want.
Well, good morning, Evangel. It is so good to be here today in the house of the Lord with all of you. And I hope you guys are well. And I know I'm just excited. And I hope you guys are having a great fast and just ready for the things of God. Whatever God is trying to remove in you or doing you, I just pray that today you're open to the Holy Spirit, just cleansing you and just making you afresh. Because I think, uh, I know for me, sometimes when I go for a fast, I change I ask God to change the things around me, but most of the time he changes the things in me. So um, today I just hope that God will uh, begin that process if he hasn't already done so. So if you want to stand with us today, and we're going to just pray and then get into a time of worship. Father God, we thank you and we love you and we honor you, Jesus. And we pray that today, God, whatever we came in here with, we just lay it down at the foot of the cross, Lord, that you would do a new thing in our hearts, Lord, that you would just prepare us for a new season, God, for greater things are yet to come. And we know that, Lord. So today, let there be a filling in our spirits, God. Let us overflow so that we can overflow in our jobs and our community, Lord, and the power of the Holy Spirit can go with us wherever we are, Lord. Because if your spirit it is in us, Lord, then that spirit can dwell amongst us, Lord God. So we just know that you have greater things. And today we would like to see a manifestation of it in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's praise the Lord. This morning we're going to sing about the evidence.
openness to receive what he wants to give us.
we can't do anything without you, Holy Spirit. God, we really can't do anything without you, Lord. God, we can't lead well. God, we can't do our jobs well. God, we can't lead our families well. Lord God, there is nothing that we don't need you for. Holy Spirit, if you would just come, Lord God. If you would just come, Lord, if you would rain on your people, Lord God. If you would open up the heavens, Lord God, and let the rain pour down on your people, Lord God.
You didn't feel my presence. You didn't feel my peace. You didn't feel my joy. He wants you to know in those times, God was working. God was working. So be of good cheer. And be encouraged today. You serve a God who never sleeps and he never slumbers. Nothing is missing from his eyes. And those tears were not lost. And your prayers did not fall on deaf ears. God is working. God is working. Come on. Even when I don't see you working, even when I don't feel you working, you never stop. team for your ministry. Isn't it nice to see some of our students this morning? Come on, encourage them, encourage them. Encourage them. Amen. When I say good morning to you, thank you for coming today, and those of, uh, uh, those of you I say good morning and thank you so much. I'm just happy and delighted that, that, that you're here. A few quick announcements before we continue our service today. First and foremost, Hope you're having a good fast. Amen? Amen? Hope you're having a good fast. Uh, for those who don't know, last week we started our fasting, our annual time of praying and fasting that we do every year here in the month of January. Um, I, 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 I just, I know God is moving. I know God is blessing. If you're here in our sanctuary or watching us online, you haven't started yet, it's not too late. You can start. Please, please join us. Uh, we're using the uh, app, uh, YouVersion app. And the uh, devotional, 21 Days of Fasting with the James River Church. If you need a hard copy, they are available as well out in the foyer, and one of our ushers can give that to you. Uh, if, if you've been fasting and you feel that you need some additional, uh, I'll use the word oomph. Everyone say oomph. Yeah. Just an oomph. This is a new week. This is a new week. Let me put it to you this way. If you have chosen to fast food, if you're giving up food and you're not hungry or it's not hurting, who knows, it's not big, it's not big enough for, of a sacrifice. Right, so this is week two. So maybe you may want to bump it up. For example, maybe last week you chose to fast one meal. Maybe this week choose to fast for a few days of this week two meals. You know, let's, let's stretch ourselves. Because as we give, 
in sacrifice, then the blessings are going to come. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, again, to remind everyone, in reference to our tithes and offerings, please use our offering box that's in a foyer, and also please use our online uh, option of, of, of doing that as well. I want to invite you back tonight for a prayer. We have prayer tonight, 6.30 to 7.30. I tell you, we had a phenomenal time of prayer last Sunday. The Spirit of God was just moving here in our church. I want to invite you out to come and pray. There are a lot of things that are going on in our nation, in our communities, and in our families. And prayer is the thing that's going to make a difference. So if you're able tonight, come back at 6.30. We're here for an hour, 6.30 to 7.30. If you can't stay the full time, that's fine. But please come and pray. Also want to make you aware, we've started a Thursday afternoon prayer. So uh, Thursday afternoons, the church, our sanctuary will be open. If you want to come in during your break time or lunch time to pray, you can do that. We'll have some meditative Christian music playing during that time. And no one will be here to bother you. Just come on in and pray, and then you can go home or finish the rest of your day. We spoke about this last week, so our connect groups will be resuming in February. Uh, more information is coming out. If you would like to be a part of that, Please call our office and we'll sign you up for one of our groups. And we will, we'll be getting you more information very shortly. Uh, February 21st is a water baptismal Sunday. Excited about that. Uh, I know one of our students wants to get baptized in the water and, and excited to do that. If you're here with me today or watching online and you're in the Glen Olden, Pennsylvania area, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you've given Christ your heart, and you've not been baptized in water, you need to be baptized in water, call our office. We want to get you set up. We'll probably have a sign-up sheet next week so people can sign up for water baptism. It, it, is, it is a command of the Lord. It is what God will have us to do. Uh, so please, if you have not done that, uh, please, please do that. Let me see what else we have. I think that's about it on uh, the announcement. So I do have some exciting news to share. So I'm going to ask if uh, uh, Tyler and Sam Starr would come with me here in the front. So last week... Um, I share with you uh, that Sophie, no, no, what? That's all right, baby. You got, you got. Feed my grandson. Take care of my boy. That's all. Right. You're all right. You're all right. You're all right. Um, but Deacon, would you come? Yes. Chris, would you come? I think that's all the deacons that we have here in the sanctuary. I believe. All right. So last week I shared that our dear sister Sandy. God has called her to move on to another ministry, and we thank her for her work with the children's ministries. And we're praying for you, Sister Sandy. Again, we thank you that God will give you your next assignment. I'm excited to say that Tyler, Tyler Starr, who's been with us for how many years now, Tyler? You've been at our church? Six years, six years. Tyler will be taking on the leadership in our children's ministries. Let's thank God for that. Very excited about that. Amen. Very excited about that. Tyler and I are going to be talking and doing some strategizing and 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 deciding when God would have us to begin to start that Sunday morning first time again. We are excited about that. Also, have some more exciting news. So, Sam, you've been our youth pastor for how long now? Five. About five years. So, about five or six years, Sam has been leading our youth ministry, and she's been doing that on a volunteer basis. I'm excited to let you guys know that our board and myself, we are bringing Sam on as a paid staff member here at Evangel. Praise God for that. Praise God for that. We're excited about that. We're excited about that. You know, it is, it is, it is biblical. The Bible talks about those who are called in the ministry, paying them monetarily for the work that they do. That is biblical. Sam has been very diligent and just so responsible, uh, working with our teenagers on a volunteer basis. I mean, look at the fruit of her ministry. We have some of our students on our worship team this morning. We're excited to bring her on staff. Amen? Amen. 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 So... We want to pray for you guys. We want to pray for you guys. Um, you know what, Sister Rhonda, would you join us in praying, please? We want to stand behind Sam and maybe lay hands on Sam as we pray for her. I'm excited to have young people around me. I learn from our young people. Thank you, baby. I learn from our young people. And these are two wonderful young people. Amen. Church, if you just, just stretch your hands and let's pray. Father God, we give you thanks, Lord, uh, for these two young people, yes, Tyler and Samantha Starr. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for calling them into your kingdom, that they said yes to Jesus, to, to being your followers, your disciples, Lord. And now, Lord God, you're calling them in this ministry. Father God, we pray your hand will be upon them. 
We pray a fresh anointing upon them both, Lord God. You would use them to build your kingdom. Use them to draw in teenagers and, and, and students and children into the kingdom of God. Lord, may the words of their mouth and the meditation of their heart be acceptable in thy sight. Use them here to build your kingdom here in Delco. And we pray for their marriage, Lord. You would bless this marriage, Father, in the name of Jesus. You would anoint this marriage, Father, in the name of Jesus, that this marriage will glorify your son, that young couples will look at these two and say, that is an expression of the glory of God. We thank you for them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God praise and glory, everybody. Amen. Thank you. Folks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good. Amen. And he is worthy to be praised. If you have your Bibles this morning, we're going to get into the Word of God. So if you have your Bibles, would you open your Bibles to the Gospel of John? John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Those who are watching us at home, if you would open your Bibles as well. John chapter 15. And the title of my sermon this morning is, Stay Connected to Jesus. Let's pray for a moment. Father God, we thank you again just for your anointing. We thank you for your presence here. We thank you for your love and your mercy. And Lord, Lord, I ask now just for an outpouring of your spirit upon me and upon us right now as we study your word, as we share your word, as we think about your word, as we meditate on it. Help me, Lord, to say what you want me to say how you want me to say it. May your words fall on these hearts. May these hearts receive it. And may it bless them. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name you'll come against every attack of the enemy that may try to steal this word from them, to snatch this word from them. May you shut Satan's mouth, I pray, in the name of Jesus. May he take his hands off of your children. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen? Amen. 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 I read a story about a man who had a problem with his sprinkler system. His system, you see, was supposed to come on automatically at a certain time in the day, but for some reason, it wouldn't work correctly. The owner of the house called a service company to take a look at it, and after some time, the service technician told the homeowner what was the problem. He said that the wire that makes the electrical connection from the timer to the system that tells the sprinkler to come on, that wire had become disconnected. So the problem wasn't that his sprinkler was broken, nor was the problem that he didn't have any water. The problem was his sprinkler system had become disconnected from the source that provides the water. Now, the longer the sprinkler system was broken, the more his green full lawn turned brown. Unfortunately, in the lives of many Christians, their lives are not as spiritually green and full as they used to be. They don't have the joy, the peace, and the power to resist temptation that they used to have. It's not because there's a power problem. It's because they've, been, they've become disconnected from the power source, who is Jesus Christ. Today and next week, I want to talk to you about staying connected to Jesus. I hope to show you that staying connected to our Lord, it brings spiritual fruit, it brings spiritual power, and it brings answered prayers. A Nazarene, a pastor, put it this way. He said, to be connected with the Lord is the only way a believer is able to do what the Lord is wanting us to do. Now, our chapter is uh, in, in text here in John 15. It, it is part of several chapters in the Gospel of John that's called the Farewell Discourses of Jesus. You see, at this point in the Lord's ministry, he wasn't speaking to the crowds. He was speaking to his closest disciples. Because the time was drawing near 
for our Lord to go to the cross and die for our sins. The time was drawing near for him to be buried and to rise on the third day and then for him to ascend to go to heaven with the Father. So this discourse was to prepare his disciples for his departure. He was letting them and us know that even though he is not with us in a physical form, we can still be connected to him. And friends, he wants to be connected to us. Now, as I said, this is part of a larger discourse, but this morning we're going to focus on John chapter 15. We're going to focus on verses 4 and 5. John 15, verses 4 and 5. And this is Jesus speaking. And the Lord says, my glasses just broke. All right. Y'all know I can't read without my glasses, right? All right. Jesus says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you're the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Point one of my sermon is this, the Lord's invitation. The Lord's invitation invitation. The NIV translates our Lord's words to say, remain in me. The message paraphrase says, live in me. So what does it mean to abide, to remain, and to live in Jesus? Well, the great preacher Charles Spurgeon said, to abide in Jesus is never to quit him for another love or another object but to remain in a living, loving, conscious, and willing union with him. Evangel, Jesus is simply saying to us, stay close to me. Stay close with me. You know, it's a nice feeling when someone invites you over their home or to attend an event. It usually means that they enjoy your company. Some years ago, I had an invitation and that invitation experience became awkward. At a former church where we used to serve, um, there was a couple there who had a vacation home in the country. And periodically, they would invite members of their church to go to their vacation home and, and spend the weekend with them. Well, at a point in time, they invited myself um, and my family to uh, spend to come to their vacation home in the country. But because of an assumption on my part, it got awkward. It got awkward. You see, I thought he was inviting us to stay the whole weekend. And we couldn't stay the whole weekend. And I assumed that because he invited other families to stay the whole weekend. So I'm thinking, of course, he invited us to stay the whole weekend. Makes sense, right? But I know we couldn't stay. We had things to do. So when I said to him, your brother, we can't stay the whole weekend, he gave me a really weird look and said, I wasn't asking you to stay the whole weekend. It's like, oops. It was uh, kind of awkward. Kind of awkward. You see, this is the deal. In in, in verse 4 of our text, you see, Jesus gives us an invitation. But his invitation, oh, let me back up, by the way. Let me say something, just in case they're watching. So we did go. We had a great time. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Just in case you're watching online. They were a wonderful family. We had a wonderful time that day. Praise God. <laughs> but I want you to see, in verse 4 of our text, Jesus Christ gives us an invitation as well. But it isn't to stay with them for a while. He invites us to stay with him continually, continually. See, that's what it means to to abide in Jesus Christ, to be with him continually. You see, advantage of the abiding in Christ, it begins with us believing that he is the Son of God and receiving him as our Savior and Lord. The Bible says in 1 John 4, verse 15, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, 
God abides in him and he in God. So you see, God desires this for every person, that we would accept this son as Savior. But we must understand that accepting Christ as Savior is only the beginning in the process of us abiding with Jesus. You see, the idea of abiding in Jesus has to do with intimacy and relationship. It's growing in that relationship. So an honest question would be, how do we develop intimacy in relationship with Jesus? Well, just as we would do with anyone else, by spending time with him. Next question would be, then, Pastor, how do we spend time with Jesus? We do it, friends, through prayer and reading our Bibles. If we want to know how to spend time with Jesus, it is through prayer and reading the Word of God. And see, as we spend uninterrupted time in prayer and reading our Bibles, a few things will begin to happen in our lives. We will live with a greater consciousness of his presence. We'll feel his presence. Jesus said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. He said that. But there's times in our Christian walk when we don't feel, amen, we don't feel his closeness. But as we spend time with him in prayer and as we spend time reading the word of God, we will live with a greater consciousness of his presence. And secondly, we will learn from him and draw strength from him in our time of need. Let me say that again. When we spend uninterrupted time, and the reason I, I want to emphasize uninterrupted time is because, listen, we can, who knows we can pray as we're driving to work? Amen? We can pray when we're on a bus, but that's not uninterrupted time. I'm talking about getting away when it's just you and the Lord Amen. and spending that quality, uninterrupted time in prayer. When we do that, we will learn from him and draw strength from him in our time of need. But this only happens as we spend time with the Lord in prayer. We must spend time. Folks, it's 2021. It's time that we spend time with Jesus in prayer. You see, we need to stop saying we don't have time to pray. We need to stop saying that. Because the truth is, no one has time to pray. We must make time to pray. Amen? Listen, those individuals who we know who have a consistent prayer life, they, like you and I, only have 24 hours a day. God doesn't give them more, more hours in the day to pray, but they make the time. They make the sacrifice. Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to make the time to pray? I'm telling you, loved ones, it's time as believers we stop making the excuses when it comes to prayer. I love you. I'm saying this because I love you. Loved ones, it's, it's unacceptable for us to do that anymore. Honestly, I think one reason why some of us as believers, we're not growing spiritually. We've been saved since 1914. We're not growing spiritually. Because we're not spending time with the Lord. We're not spending time with Jesus. Spending time with Jesus, friends, is, it is always time well spent. Amen? It is never a waste of time to spend time with Jesus. One commentator said, whatever leads to abiding in Jesus is good. Whatever hinders it is bad. So I ask you this question this morning. What is hindering you from spending time with Jesus in reading our Bibles? I want you to think about that for a moment. Think about it. What is stopping you? What is hindering you from, from consistent prayer life in reading our Bibles? Well, I'm going to say next year, next year I'm saying it out of love. Please understand me. But for some of us, you know what's stopping us from praying and reading our Bibles? It's spiritual laziness. It's spiritual laziness. We'd rather stay in bed and get that extra 15, 20 minutes of sleep than get up and spend time in prayer. For some of us, it's spiritual pain. What am I talking about? We've gone through a hurtful experience, a hurtful time, 
and now we're angry at God. So we're going to pray. And know that we're praying for you. We're praying God would heal you. For some of us, it's spiritual complacency. Spiritual complacency. What am I talking about? We become satisfied with our present level of intimacy with Jesus. We're satisfied. I want you to know that God has more for you. God has more blessings, more insight, more favor, more power. He wants to give you. He wants to bless you with. Never be satisfied with where you are with the Lord. We can, who knows, we can always grow in our relationship with Jesus. Amen? No one has arrived. I know I haven't arrived. And, and next, for some, honestly, and I'm saying this in love, it's being spiritually backslidden. It's just being backslidden state. We've allowed sin in our lives to take control. And because there's sin in our lives, fellowship with the Lord now is broken. And that sin in our lives is keeping us, keeping us from wanting to pray. Friends, whatever it is, it's time to change. Christ is inviting you. He's inviting me into an intimate relationship with himself. It's time to change. Whatever it is, it's time to say, I want Jesus more than that. Can we, can we make a commitment this new year uh, to, to making our relationship with Jesus Christ the greatest priority in our life? I wonder, is Christ a priority in our lives? Is he a priority or is he just someone we go to and talk about on Sunday mornings? See, friends, I have to tell you, if the only time we think about the Lord, if the only time we spend time with the Lord is Sunday mornings, it's not enough. It's not enough. You and I need to be spending time with the Lord every day. When we make a commitment to give Jesus the priority in our lives, our relationship with him, the priority. When Sophie and I met him and we started dating and we fell in love, you know, she was a priority. She was a priority in my life. It was important to me. Because I, I wanted to get to know this woman so much better, and, and I wanted to understand her so much better. This, this woman who was from a different culture and, and from a different country, I, I just wanted to know all I could know about her. Can we have even more of that sort of feeling about Jesus, wanting to know more about him, wanting to understand him better, wanting to get closer to him? Making Christ a priority. See, the text shows us that the invitation Jesus offers, it is reciprocal. In the New Living Translation, Jesus says this way, remain in me and I will remain in you. We must understand, friends, that Jesus will never force himself on anybody. He will never do that. But he promises that as we desire a closer walk with him, a closer relationship with him, he will reach right back out to us. He's right there. He says in Revelations, I stand at the door and knock. Will you open the door and let him in? He's calling you. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to develop that intimate relationship with you. You see, the amount of peace and joy and anointing of the Holy Spirit in our lives, it all comes in accordance with our relationship with Jesus Christ. If we want to move in the power of the Holy Spirit, we want to move in the anointing of God, and I don't know about you, I want the anointing of God on my family. Can I get a witness? I want the anointing of God on my marriage, the anointing of God in my ministry. I want the anointing of God in your life. I know that that anointing will come as I reach in and press in to Jesus. There's the anointing. There I receive the anointing. There I receive wisdom. There I receive guidance. There I receive a word from the Lord as I'm pressing in. And I press in in prayer. And first, I'm not speaking about salvation because, you know, I'm not talking about salvation because many believers, they accepted the Lord and they're going to be in heaven. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about between earth 
and heaven between now and seeing Jesus, the amount of God's favor and God's power that's moving in our lives. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I want for you, my friends. I love you with all of my heart. Yes, I want us to spend eternity together in heaven, but from here to there, I want to see the power of God manifested in your life. Manifested in your life. I want to see those giants in your life pulled down. I want to see that bondage you set free from it. And it comes with the time, we, the time we spend with Jesus. I think it was Charles Stanley that said, much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. No power. Second point is we see the Lord's identity, his identity. Verse 5 in the Amplified Version says this. This is how Jesus says this. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is, cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. Jesus says two important things about himself in this verse. First, he says, he is our source. He is our source. Our Lord uses an agricultural imagery of a vine and his branches to illustrate the relationship between him and us. You see, he is the vine. We are the branches that are connected to him. And just as the branches receive their source of life, by being connected to the vine, we receive our source of spiritual life by being connected to Jesus. By being connected to Jesus. Okay, right now we're going to stop and take a prayer break. I feel the Spirit of God saying stop and take a prayer break. Would you bow your heads? Father God, Father God, I'm praying now. In Jesus' name, that your word would go forth and touch your people. Father God, I'm praying against the lies and the attacks of the enemy right now. I'm praying against his, his, his whispering in someone's ear. I'm praying against him attempting to steal this word. I'm praying against, Father God, unattentiveness in the name of Jesus. I'm praying against all the attacks of the enemy on your people. When your people receive your word and be set free from all bondage. For you said, Lord, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. thought I needed to do that. Christ is the vine. Get this illustration in your head. He is the vine and we are the branches. And just as the branches receive their source of life by being connected to the vine, we receive our source of spiritual life by being connected to Jesus. When we disconnect ourselves from him, we lose spiritual power and we won't be able to produce spiritual fruit. The only way we're going to produce spiritual fruit in our lives is when we're connected to Jesus, who is our source. When we pull away from him, when we break fellowship with him, then we are not connected to him. Do you see what I'm saying? So what are spiritual fruits? Well, the Bible talks about a few. He talks about love. Love is a spiritual fruit. But he speaks about agape love, a sacrificial love. That's a spiritual fruit. Joy. Joy is a spiritual fruit. See, joy is, is, is not just like happiness. Joy is you're joyful because of God, amen? You're not joyful because of your situation. You're not joyful because of happening, what's happening around you. You're joyful because the Spirit of God is what? Living in you. Joy, it is a spiritual fruit. Peace, that peace of God. That when there's a storm happening around you, you're cool. You're cool with it. Because you've got God's peace. That's a spiritual fruit. Being kind. Don't we need people just to be kind, just to be nice? It's a spiritual fruit. Goodness, faithfulness is a spiritual fruit. Being faithful. I love this. Being gentle. Being gentle. 
Those are some of the fruits that come when we're connected to the Lord. Being gentle. Having self-control. Can I get a witness, somebody? Having, we're trying to fast. Having self-control. Self-control. When someone cuts us off on the street and we want to say something, can I get a witness? Having self-control. I was telling some of our leaders, I got in a car accident last week. A young, little, young lady, she, she ran a stop sign. Ran right in front of me. Bam, hit her car. Who knows I wasn't in a good mood? Can I get a witness? And to make it worse, I just came from the Jamaican restaurant. Come on, somebody. With oxtail from my wife. Now the oxtail is on my dashboard. I'm glad God gave me self-control. Self-control. Another fruit, godly knowledge and godly wisdom. Don't we need more godly knowledge? Don't we need more godly wisdom so we can do what God wants us to do, so we can be a people who understand the times we're in and know what to do? That comes through godly knowledge and godly wisdom. A few more. Patient endurance. Hanging in there. Not giving up, knowing that God's going to make a way out of no way, and living as God desires. Friends, these are all qualities of spiritual fruit. But understand, if we're not connected to the Lord, we're not going to see those fruits produced in our lives. And I don't know about you, but I need those fruits produced in my life. And one of the reasons why many of us are not is because we've disconnected ourselves from Jesus. We're disconnected from him. We used to love to, to come to church and worship the Lord. We don't love it anymore. Why? We're disconnected from him. We used to love to get into the word of God and, and read God's word. Well, we can't remember the last time we read our Bibles. We're disconnected from him. We would love to get into our prayer closet and, and spend time in prayer. Now, if we give him five minutes while we're on our way to work, well, that's all we can give him. We're disconnected. We're disconnected. And when we disconnect ourselves from him, we're losing that source of power. Christ is our source. Almost done. The second important thing Christ says about himself is he is God. He is God. Our Lord uses the words, I am, over 20 times in the Gospel of John. And at least six of them, there are metaphors. He's speaking of his deity, that he is God and his relationship to us as our Savior. He says this in the Gospel of John. He says, I am the light of the world. He brings light in spiritual darkness. He said, I am the door that leads to salvation. When we, we go through Christ, he leads us to salvation. He says, I am the good shepherd that lays down his life. He says, no, the others run away, but I let my life down for you. I am the good shepherd. I, I am the one who provides for you. I am the one who looks after you. I am the one who prays for you. I am the good shepherd. I'm the one that, that chases off the enemies that try to take you out. I am, he says, the good shepherd. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever, he says, believes in me, though he die, yet he will live. He says, I am the way I am the truth. I am the life. Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, Jesus says, you can do nothing. Worship team, would you come? Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, this is the Amplified Version, he says, I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. If you want a life that's overflowing with spiritual fruit and the power of the Holy Spirit, we must stay connected to Jesus. 
Evangel, I pray that the Holy Spirit will open your eyes to see that the God who created all things and then laid his life down so you could have everlasting life, that God is inviting you and I into an intimate relationship with himself. And he's not doing it for his benefit. He's doing it for our benefit. Jesus Christ is calling us into a closer relationship. Will you accept the invitation? Before I close, let me share my heart with you. My prayer for you and for me in this new year is that we would draw closer to Jesus. Do I want to see our ministries growing? Yes, I do. Do I want to see people getting saved and discipled? Yes, I do. Do I want to see small groups flourishing? Yes, I do. I want to see all those things. But friends, those things will start as we spend time with the Lord. You see, I've, I've seen, and I've shared this with you, I've seen too many believers where they were focusing on their ministry and not their relationship with Jesus. I've seen that. And yes, the ministry grew, but their spiritual life began to decrease because they were not connected to the Lord. And I'm not, I understand him, I'm not talking about losing one's salvation. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when we have broken fellowship with the Lord and we're not connected to him as we used to be. My prayer for you and for me this year, this new year, 2021, we will be connected to Christ more. We would have a, a greater desire, not just to serve the Lord, but to get to know the Lord. Just spend time with him. Developing that close relationship. See, I believe the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, it will come to us as we reach out to Jesus. As my pastor once told me, he said, don't seek the baptism, seek the one who baptizes us with the baptism, who is Jesus. He said, seek the baptizer, seek Jesus. If you want power, seek Jesus. If you want answers to prayer, seek Jesus. You want the fruits of the Spirit in your life and your family, seek Jesus. You want the anointing of God in your life, seek Jesus. You want to see the gifts of the Spirit poured out on our church, poured out on your family, seek Jesus. You want to see our loved ones coming back to the Lord, seek Jesus. You want to see favor in our lives, seek Jesus. Folks, set free from addictions and, and all sorts of abominable things, seek Jesus. Seek Him. The Bible says those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. We need to hunger for the Lord. And not for what He can do for us, just hunger for Him. You see what I'm saying? One point in the gospel, Jesus spoke about the crowds. And He said, they didn't come because they loved Him, they come to get the bread and the fish. They came to eat the things that he could give them. Sometimes I think as believers, first we fall into this mindset where we go to prayer because we want to get things from the Lord. And that's okay. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. We are to ask God for the things that we need, but we should want more than just that sort of relationship. Just to hang out with him. Right? A few weeks ago, remember, I, I preached on Mary and Martha, the two sisters. Martha was busy about serving the Lord. But Mary chose to be with the Lord. And remember what Jesus said? He said, Mary chose what was better that wouldn't be taken away from her. So I'm asking that we strive to know Christ better this year. Amen? Stand with me. Let's sing about the goodness of our God together.
30 years ago, I had graduated from undergrad, and I had my little degree, had my little job downtown, had my little briefcase. I thought I made it, but I didn't have Jesus. I didn't have the Lord. And I was presented with the gospel. Christ came because he loved me so much and he died for me he took my place because my sins warranted I die spiritually be destined in hell eternally but then I, I was presented with the gospel that you know Jesus came to take my place because he loved me so much and I didn't deserve it. And then he rose on the third day, letting me know that I will rise one day with him. And I've just learned to love him so much. And I pray that we, we never take that for granted. And there's so much more, friends, Christ has for us you and for me. Before I give the blessing, I just want to say, if you're watching me here in our sanctuary or you are watching us online and, and you've never given your life to Christ, you, you've, maybe you were like me, maybe you were a religious hypocrite. Like me, I grew up in United Methodist Church. I knew how to act like a Christian on the outside, but there was no evidence of Christ on the inside. If you're here or watching online and you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to have that personal relationship with God, you know you need to be forgiven of your sins, you know you've messed this thing up, and you know you, and you realize you can't get it right, only one who can get it right is Jesus Christ for you. And he did it on the cross. So just bow your heads right here you're watching me at home or wherever you are and you want to give your life to Christ, just pray this prayer with me if you want to do that. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I admit that I'm a sinner and I've fallen short of what's right to do in your eyes. I believe you are the Son of God. You came and died for me. You took my place. You rose on the third day. So I say, come into my life now, Jesus. Come and be my Savior and the leader of my life. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 If you prayed that prayer for the first time, if you're with me here in our sanctuary, please see me after service. We want to help you grow as a man or woman of God. If you're watching us online and you're in the Glen Olden area, call our church. The number is there. I promise I will call you back personally. If you're not in the Glen Olden, Pennsylvania area and watching us online, please find a Bible teaching church and tell the pastor that you, 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 you become a Christian, you need to be a disciple. Friends, know that I love you. Know that I pray for you. I pray for your family. When I pray for you, I call you by name call you by name. I will continue to do that. I hope you will come back tonight and join us for prayer. Our nation is facing a possible very challenging time again. Let's come together and pray for God's guidance, God's protection over our nation, God, and God's forgiveness. Because we all have sinned and fall short of his glory. Amen? So may the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen? Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Lord, I love you. God bless. For our team, our meeting is in the sanctuary here.